Hi, welcome back. So glad you could be here and join me for this video. We're starting a new project today. We're going to make a potting bench. Now, if you're a gardener or have a friend or a relative who's a gardener, this would be a great gift. A potting bench is fantastic for potting flowers, repotting houseplants, even making up those beautiful hanging baskets for your yard. A potting bench will kind of keep all of your mess confined to one area, but it'll also keep all the necessary supplies together in one place. Now we're going to build this potting bench out of cedar. Cedar's naturally bug resistant and naturally somewhat weather resistant, although we will be putting a finish on towards the end. And we will use some fasteners, but we'll use 316 or 304 grade stainless fasteners so nothing stains that pretty cedar wood. Now here, I'm able to get western red cedar construction lumber and western red cedar trim grade lumber. And I'll be using both types in this project. You can use whatever cedar is available in your area. Now this is not going to be a real hard project. It'll take you two, maybe three weekends to knock this out. And if you do like I'm going to do, build two at one time. It'll only take you a few minutes longer to build two than to build one. Well, let's go take a look at my sketch, get an idea of what it's going to look like, and then we'll start prepping the lumber. So this is the sketch that I'm working off of to build this potting bench. And just to get the sizes, I'll do some hopefully better drawings a little bit later. Um, but I want to build the bench essentially 54 inches in length and roughly about 26 inches front to back in total. I want to make the bench top itself 34 inches high, and I'd like this back leg to be about 62 inches high. This board across the back may wind up having a small shelf on it. I may wind up doing a design or a scallop or something in it. And I want to have a shelf across the lower part down here, roughly eight or nine inches off the ground, space to put watering cans and things like that. And in the top, I want to have removable sections so it's easy to clean. And one of the sections, I want it to be boards that are spaced out a little bit so that the dirt can fall through when you're potting a flower or you're repotting some ivy or something. I also want to have a removable top that will lift off and give you access to a container of potting soil so that all of your supplies are handy. So uh, we're going to start off with the four legs, actually eight because I'm building two of these, and we're going to use construction grade western red cedar two by fours for the legs. And we're going to mill them square so I'm not sure exactly what the final size of those will be, um, the width and the depth of those legs, but uh, we'll figure that out here pretty shortly. So let's go take a look how we're going to do that. Okay, so I've got my 2x4s rough marked to cut to a rough length. And what I've tried to accomplish here is to, um, obviously like on this end, I'm cutting off any splitting or obvious defects, but I'm also trying to avoid any knots that are going to be a real obvious problem. Now on this cedar, there's no way you're going to avoid having some knots in the edges of the wood. But an obviously split or cracked knot could very easily fall out 
during the milling process and leave kind of an ugly gap in the leg. Now, the rear legs on these are going to be nominally about 62 inches long, so I've marked out roughly 64, 65 inches, and I'm going to cut these to rough length. It'll just save some time in the jointer and the planer. I've got four of those marked out and ready to go. I've also marked out the front legs and where I want to cut those out of these two by fours. And of course, since these are eight foot long two by fours, I'll be able to get two front legs out of each one. And again, I've just avoided some really obvious and bad flaws and marked out about 36 inches for a rough length before I start to mill these. So I need to cut these to length. I'm going to get that done and then we'll start jointing and planing these boards. Well, I've been uh, flattening these two by fours. What I did was I went a couple of passes on this broad flat side and then a couple of passes on one of the edges. And I just want to get those square. I'm trying to remove as little material as possible so that these legs stay as large as possible. Now that I've got that done, I've got some one by six stock. And the first thing I'm gonna do is do like I did with the legs. I'm gonna cut this down to the rough lengths that I need. And then I'm gonna join one edge so I'll be able to run them through the table saw and rip them to size. So I'm gonna get that done and then we'll go to the planer and what we want to do there is get rid of this rough textured side and finish squaring up the leg stock. Now this is what I call trim stock. It's smooth, or relatively smooth on one side, and then it has this real rough finish on the other side. Uh, typically this is used for trim around windows and doors when you're doing cedar siding and as a consequence of that it's actually about seven eighths of an inch thick so after i joint one side i'm going to run the other side through the planer and we should have three quarter inch stock out of this all right with these jointed now on two edges what i'm ready to do is to plane the opposite edges and get these to precisely the same size and again i'm trying to take as small amount as possible off but yet still have a nice clean surface. I'm gonna start with these short boards. And let's see what these look like. You can see I've got a chalk mark on here from previous. We'll get this cleaned up. That looks really nice. Okay, now I've been anxious to see how this rough cut trim board is gonna clean up. So let's take a look at this. This is going to be real pretty. We don't want to make this furniture grade smooth. We just want to smooth off that rough exterior finish on here and get it nice and smooth, sort of splinter free. But that's going to be great right there. All right, well, that was pretty noisy. We've got one more operation to go here. We've got three sides of these legs jointed and planed.
And the last thing we've got is this edge, which has not had anything done to it. I've got that marked in chalk. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these together in pairs and run them through the planer. And hopefully we'll be able to get everything exactly the same size. I've got my little uh, roll-up earplugs out of my ears now so I can hear again. And what we've got now is we've got our leg stock and our frame stock um, roughed out or smoothed out as the case may be. We've run them through the jointer and through the planer and it turns out that the leg stock wound up being an inch and three-eighths thick and three and three-eighths inch wide. And that kind of makes sense because we probably removed about an eighth of an inch in the process of straightening and smoothing this. We also have nice sharp corners now that'll help out with our joinery. Those rounded edges are gone. So now what we're ready to do is we're going to cut this to length. So let's go to our cut list and take a look at what we need. For the tall legs in the back, we need four pieces that are cut 62 inches long. Now remember, I'm making two of these potting benches. Your quantities be half this. For the short legs, we need four cut to 34 inches long. And our leg stock will be ready to go. So we're going to go to the miter saw and do that. Okay, now I'm going to cut the long legs to length first. A little too long for me to set up a stop block, which is what I'd normally do. So I'm just going to have to measure these and sight these really carefully to cut them to length. Now, all these boards have been cut on the ends once, but I'm inspecting the ends really carefully to make sure there's nothing that looks bad. Uh, any splitting or, or checking or anything in the ends. In fact, in this board, I did cut a little tiny bit off the end just because I didn't like the way it looked. So I've got this marked out and measured, and I'm just going to line this up real carefully and make my cut. I'll do that for all four legs and then we'll come back and we'll cut the short legs. Okay, now the same thing with the short legs. I'm uh, trimming anything off the end that doesn't look good. The only difference here is I'm able to set up a stop block so it's going to go a little bit faster. Okay, now we've got our leg stock cut to length. Everything is ready to go, ready for the joinery. The next thing we need to do is we need to cut the balance of our framing stock, and that's going to be out of this one by material. So let's take a look at the cut list, and remember these quantities that I'm talking about are for two of these benches. So if you're just making one, cut the quantity in half. We're going to need four pieces that are cut to five inches wide. Now this is one by six stock. I've joined it an edge but it should be pretty close still to five and a half inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to rip down pieces until we get them to five inches wide and those pieces are going to need to be 54 inches long. Then we're going to need stock ripped to two and a half inches wide. I'm going to need six pieces that are 54 inches long and eight pieces that are 21 and a half inches long. So table saw first, then the miter saw. Let's get to cutting.
All right, now for the squareness of the assembly, the length of these frame parts is really critical. So I do have room on my miter saw station to extend my fence out and put a stop block. I need four of these five inch wide pieces exactly 54 inches long and I need six of the two and a half inch wide pieces the same exact length. Having all those pieces exactly the same length will help the assembly be perfectly square when it's put together. You can see how my cut's going to wind up right on that knot, and I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim a couple of inches off this end. Then I clear this knot completely. Okay, well, all of our frame stock, the basic frame of this garden bench, those pieces are all cut out, milled, ready to go. So now what we need to do is we need to cut notches in our leg pieces for our cross braces to fit into. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to do them one bench at a time. So I've taken two long legs, two short legs. I've labeled each of the legs with an A on the bottom. So I know this is set A. And I'm going to use a square and line up the ends and get those perfectly lined up. And then I'm just going to put a clamp on here temporarily to hold these in registration. And I'll put another one down here. And I just want to double check. Yep. We're lined up. All right, so I've been working on a drawing and uh, it still needs a little bit of work, but basically this drawing shows where our notches are gonna be in our leg stock. And the first notch starts at 10 and a quarter inches up from the bottom of the leg. So I'm gonna make a mark here at 10 and a quarter. And we know, of course, that that back brace that runs across the back is two and a half inches in width. So that's going to take us to 12 and three quarters. So I'm going to make a mark at 12 and three quarters. Now I'm holding my tape down here real tight so it doesn't move. And my next, whoops, it did move. Okay, we'll start over and we'll just put it at the end. There we go. And our next mark will be at 31 and a half inches up from the bottom. And the board that's going to go in that notch is five inches wide. So that takes us to 36 and a half. And then the five inch wide board that spans across the top is going to start at 53 and a half inches. And of course it's five inches, so that'll be 58 and a half. Okay, so with those marks on this set, now what I can do is I can take a square and lay it on here and strike a line all the way across all four boards. And 
that is our notch location. We'll do the same thing up here. And and the last two right down here. All right, now you will notice on this that we've got a five inch wide board spanning across the back two legs, but the front two legs gets a two and a half inch board and you'll see that it's lined up across the bottom, but we'll only be notching the top two and a half inches of these legs. This is the basic marking so that we can cut and we're going to use the dado stack in the table saw to cut our notches. It seems like in the last project series of videos I cut off one of the videos just about the time I was switching over to the dado stack and the table saw and that's what we're going to do today. Now I don't want you to think that this is some kind of terrible difficult job I have to go take a nap after I change over to the dado stack. Not at all. It's relatively easy. It's just a matter of time. So I'm going to switch over to the dado stack and in the next video we're going to cut those notches and we're going to assemble the frame of this potting bench and after that it's just a piece of cake to finish it up. I look forward to seeing you in that next video and thank you so much for watching this one. Mm -hmm.